now, back to Access Tech Live. And we're back. Now, when the weather gets nice, it's only obvious that we try and find a way to extend our obsession with technology outdoors. Now, some people don't experience all four seasons like we do in Canada, so this can be relevant for some people all year long. So we're going to highlight some products and categories that can help make your outdoor spaces hopefully a more tech-friendly area. And here to help us is Chris Peltz, the host of the Blind Grilling Experience podcast. Chris, I've been trying all day not to say Blind Gorilla podcast. I think that would be a very interesting <laughs> but very different show. Um, thank you for being with us. Uh, it's lovely to have yeah. you back with us here on the show. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. I've been looking forward to it. Chris, you know, I figured, you know, what better person to get involved in a little roundtable discussion here about some cool things outdoors? And, and I figured let's start things off, obviously, in a, a very comfortable scenario for you. Um, I'm a big fan of the Weber grills. I've got a cool Genesis outside that they call smart because they've added the thermometer built into it. It's 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 a great grill. I think it's um, obviously like any grill is as long as it cooks your meat, you're happy with it. Um, what, what is your, what your fancy when it comes to this particular grill? Is there a model in particular or a brand that you like more than the other? I, it really, when it comes to cost effectiveness, Weber is hard to beat uh, altogether because of the warranty that they offer. I mean, there's there's so many things, you know, I, I just really try to convince folks that, uh, you know, don't don't just spend two hundred dollars on a grill every two years. You know, try to invest in one that's going to last. And, and Weber's a great option for that. Uh, but uh, I love the ceramic grills, you know, the big green egg, the the KJ's. Um, I, you know, that uh, just something about the ceramics that are, I think make things even more accessible, uh, a little bit safer when it comes to feeling around and touching on the grills. But um, it, charcoal is definitely my my go to, whether it's in a Weber uh, or a ceramic grill. And uh, like Mark was saying there, uh, Chris, you know, it's not just the grills, of course, it's the thermometers as well, which can make a big difference to people like you and I who are blind, right? You've got to know, you yeah. can't look at the, the meat and know if it's cooked or not. So it's really important to know. And these smart thermometers can really help. Tell us how they work. Yeah, I, so y y we get so comfortable sometimes when we try to do timing, which, you know, we've, you know, in years past that has been okay, but it's been really inconsistent. With these meat probes, I mean, you're, you're sticking this probe into the meat, um, or if it's just monitoring the temperature that you're cooking at, and you can make adjustments. You know, they usually connect to your to your smartphone, to a tablet, and so you can you know monitor you know the the temperature that you're cooking at, and you can you know make adjustments, add airflow, or you know if there's a dial or something, you can turn it up or turn it down. But then keeping track of the temperature of the meat. You know, that that's where you really get that consistent cook every time. It's not like, well, you know, the steaks were perfect last week, but, you know, I missed it a little bit this week. It, you can do it every time, every single time, you know, when you're able to find an accessible meat probe that you stick in the meat, leave it in the meat, and, you know, just monitor it while it cooks. And, you know, uh, you're not always opening up the grill, checking it, looking at it. You, you got it that information right there on your smartphone. That is so, so clever. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, really useful. And of course, you can use these indoors and outdoors, I guess, as well. Lots of oh, yeah. value in having yeah. something like this, right? Um, one tool that I think is brilliant, and I use it at home all the time, is a smart plug. And you can get outdoor smart plugs as well, which I think is really cool. I think about, for example, Christmas lights or lights you might have out in the garden. Again, you know, I'm thinking about it from my point of view, selfishly, Chris, but you're blind as well, so we can be selfish <laughs> together for a minute. Uh, you know, right. a smart plug is great for knowing that those lights are on or off, which can be really valuable, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's been several times when... You know, I'm I'm headed off to bed, and my wife's like, uh, "There's still a light on," and I'm like, "Where? I don't, <laughs> where? Where's the light? Where? I gotta go, you know, check all the switches and do different things." But yeah, when there are smart plugs, I mean, that's, you know, that just makes it easy. You know, just tell one of your smart speakers, you know, turn them off, or you know, open up an app and just, uh, you know, tell her, you know, just turn them off. I mean, it just makes things so much easier. 
Now, I don't know about you guys. I got a pool outside, and uh, and I want to kind of combine these two together here because um, I invested in a pool robot, and, and kind of like the grill story, you know, I invested a little bit higher end when I did it uh, about three or four years ago, and I haven't looked back because it takes the maintenance out of actually maintaining a pool and cleaning the bottom of it and the walls with algae and stuff like that. Um, they're really cool devices because they're also app-connected, and those apps bring that accessibility to the table there as well. The device itself, you just throw in the pool, and you just make sure you empty a basket, you know, Every, every couple months to make sure it's good. And the app is what gives you the accessibility control and, and you can add the automations and stuff to it, which is pretty cool. Like mine goes every couple days or every day, it goes for a couple hours. And I wanted to lump that in with the smart mowers because that's a new category of things that we've seen lately. I, I know a lot of people with large masses of land who take advantage of these mowers all over the place. It does smaller amounts of mowing over longer periods of time, so which is actually apparently healthier for your lawn. But again, Adding that app connectivity and that Wi-Fi connectivity makes all these tools a pretty interesting, unique accessibility side of things. But, uh, you know, I, I love it because, you know, it, when when I first got married, for example, my wife came home from work and she's, you know, she said, thanks for trying to mow the yard. And I was like, well, how do you know I didn't hire a kid down the street to mow it? She said, I can see the big strips you missed. So, you know, I mean, that's, uh, you know, it. The, you run into that kind of problem, but with these mowers, they map out everything. I mean, some are running on GPS, some are running, you know, through the ass, but they, they just, it's like they just work and that, and that's really what we want, isn't it? Hey, listen, I, I did the best thing ever for me, and I know some people don't like doing this, but I got artificial grass because I thought, well, you know, oh, there's smart. a solution to the problem. Who needs a go. robot yeah. mower, right? <laughs> Although I will say I did, short story here, I did actually not tell my gardener uh, that had got artificial grass. So when he came in on that day to try and mow the lawn, it was a rather amusing day, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> well, for me, it was, not for him. Uh, but listen, uh, of course, sound outdoors is a big deal for us as well. Listening to music, chilling out, maybe listening to a podcast if you're by the pool or you're by on the, in the hot tub or whatever. Now, Mark, you've got a fantastic new uh, speaker which has just been launched. I do. It's right here. It's right here in my left hand. It's it's actually, you know, Beats is uh, become a pretty well-known brand in the audio space, and they've come out with a new Beats Pill speaker, which is uh, water-resistant, IP67 water and dust resistant, of course, compatible with Android and, of course, iOS, up to 24 hours of battery life, and in a small form factor that it fits kind of across two of my hands, of course, they call it a pill because of the shape of it. It looks like a giant pill. I wouldn't try swallowing it, though. Um, it, it is amazing sound out of this device. It comes with a little lanyard on the side, so you can kind of hang it around with you. A uh, really cool device for under $200, which I find is, is super neat. Uh, but I want to bring it up another one, which is the Sonos Move, which I got many years ago that's still outdoors. And actually, I never bring it in in the winter, mostly because I forget, and by the time I remember, it's buried in snow somewhere. And it works every single season, taking a beating in the winter and all the elements and it has built-in access to, of course, Amazon Echo and like A-Lady type features and your iOS type features as well. So you can be out at the pool or out in the backyard or doing whatever you're doing and actually trigger all those other smart devices. So that's why I think a speaker is a pretty cool invention, especially when it has all the smarts to it. Do you have one outdoors, Chris? I've got the Sonos out in my garage where... Um, it just, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it just works. I love it. And uh, I listen to it, you know, pretty much every day. Uh, and I love the accessibility of those. Absolutely. I can raise you guys. Uh, you're talking oh. Sonos, you're talking Beats. I've got uh, the Bose SoundLink Max in my hand. Comes in a beautiful light blue. This is entirely waterproof as well. It can even float in water, unlike me. Oh, really? And uh, this is a really <laughs> cool device. Uh, USB char USB-C charging, of course. Uh, what's great is you can connect to two devices simultaneously as well. It is a very heavy speaker, 4.7 pounds. So it's uh, not the lightest around, but it does have an incredible bass response as well. So if you want to get those beats thumping in your back garden, uh, both sound like Max is quite good. Something I invested in, guys, um, a couple of years back were wi not only Wi-Fi security cameras, 
but cellular powered security cameras that had a solar panel. I found this super interesting because there were some areas that I'm like, I can't get a wire to this location. I can't find a plug to power this up. Um, so there's companies like Arlo that makes it, REO Link have these great cameras that come with a little solar panel or you can get the accessory to keep it powered pretty much all day long. And the cellular <laughs> option is really cool because you don't need to worry about your Wi-Fi. And I find people doing this and using these in, in country homes, in cottages, in places that might not even have electricity. If you want to keep an eye on something, they're super, super handy. And it's something that I, Stephen, I know you would want in your backyard, but you know, again, again, you know, you're hiking, you're, you have a small cabin in the woods. This is a perfect device for that kind of element of it as well. And then the other one on the solar side of things, solar lighting, I think, has become super popular. And I think it's because of the, the capacity of the batteries and the ability to just literally, you leave it, you plug it in, you leave it, you never have to worry about, oh, turning on a smart switch or turning on any switch. And you've got a lit, uh, you know, a lit path if it's a path you want. Maybe it's around, you know, uh, your, your grill outside. It's, I find, a really cool accessory. And more, I'm seeing more and more people use them. Are you? So I, well, I I've got the Arlo. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I've, I've got the Arlo cameras, and and they they work great. We've got our property surrounded, and we you know, we monitor all of that. We, of course, I've got my grill station, you know, my outdoor kitchen, and you know, just to you know, yeah, about the only thing we've had up there are coons and and possums so far, but uh, we're able to catch all of that, and which is which has been great. I haven't had access to the uh, to the satellite link, but the the Wi-Fi ones have just been phenomenal for us. Uh, Chris, uh, obviously you've got the podcast. How can people find that and uh, how else can they follow you online? Yeah, if you go to blindgrilling.com is the website. Uh, and of course, any of the major podcast app, Blind Grilling Experience, uh, is is on all the, the major podcast apps. And then on YouTube, uh, go to youtube.com slash blindgrilling and, uh, and you can find us there. And we're posting some new videos as of late as well. Awesome, Chris. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate you joining us in this conversation. I love listening to your podcast and all your all your cooking tips. It's awesome. So thank you for joining yeah, us. And when we when we come back, guys, uh, there's one category of things we didn't talk about, which was smart sprinklers and irrigation. There's a company that's actually based here in Canada called Auto O T O, and they have a smart lawn care system that I've actually been playing with. Didn't they reached out to me after I installed this? So we're going to talk all about it and how it makes caring for those outdoor spaces a whole lot easier. Stick around. It's Access Tech Live. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back.